and ten. Uh, in the diagram below, D and F represent positions of Dunbridge, Ellsford, and Fairtown. Okay. Dunbridge is fifteen from Ellsford. Now that's shown, so fine. That's also shown. That's fine. Fine. Okay. So once again, don't need to know any of all the information is, is on here. Calculate the distance between Dunbridge and Fairtown. Distance between D and F. So we'll call that F. Okay. Now the only thing when you see bearings, the only thing you really need to remember is first of all, compass points can be quite handy because I need to talk about due east. Okay, so never eat shredded wheat, and that is just to remember. I don't condone that. Shredded wheat is lovely and it's very healthy. But yeah, so I remember never eat shredded wheat. And this is 90 degrees, everything's 90 degrees, everything's perpendicular, okay, to each other. So that's one thing you remember, so everything is also from north, that's a bearing, that's the other thing you need to remember. So north, east, south and west, they're all perpendicular, and everything's taken from north, okay. So all your bearings start here, and they work their way around, okay. And that's the bearing, you know, that would be the, uh, the bearing, okay. So no one's, no one's saying, oh, aye, Captain, we're going... You know, negative 60 degrees from north, no. Okay, it would be, oh, Captain, we're going 300 degrees. Okay, because you're going north all the way around. Okay, so 300 all the way around, you wouldn't say, oh, it's 60 degrees west or whatever. Okay, so that's a bearing, always from north, you see that in there. So there's the first bit of information we need to think about. Um, the next thing, again, I'm seeing angles and I'm seeing lengths. So are we going to use the sine rule or the cosine rule? That should be the first thing you're thinking about. And I would say we've got a length and a length. Uh, we're probably going to work out this angle, and I'd imagine work out this angle. So to me, it's going to be the sine rule. Okay. So a over sine a is equal to b over sine b. So a over sine a is equal to b over sine b. If there was three lengths, I'd be thinking oh, it's going to be the uh, it's going to be the Cosine rule, but yeah, two lengths, two angles are going to be the uh, the sine rule. So, what are the um, what are the angles then? How do we know that? How, how could we possibly know? Well, like I just said, everything is perpendicular. That is ninety degrees, isn't it? Because it said that Dunbridge is fifteen kilometers west. Yeah, so. We know that's a straight, we can see it's a straight line, but they physically said it's a straight line, you know, it's west, okay, so it's, it's definitely 90 degrees, okay, so D is to the west of E. So that's 90 degrees, then this is going to be 36 degrees, okay. And same again, we can say that angle in there is going to be 180 degrees, which would make this angle in here 50 degrees. Now, this angle in here is going to have to add up to 270, isn't it? Because if we think of our never eat shredded wheat all the way around there, that's 90, 90, and 90. So that's 270. So we've got 230 uh, all the way around. I've said that was 50. That's actually, we don't need to write that just now. Um, doesn't really matter. Actually, what I should have said was 270 minus 230 is 40. But yeah, 50 plus 40 is 90, okay? So yeah, that angle in there is 40. I know this angle is 36. And then, why not, just in case. Uh, so they both give you 76 angles instead of triangle or 180. I know that I've got 76. So this angle in here is 104. So I've worked out all the angles. Okay. Um, yeah, so now I've got enough information to, to get on with. So what are my A's and what are my B's? Well, as long as you're using an angle opposite the length you're looking at, you're going to be fine. So the angle I'm going to use with my x is going to be 40. That is very thick. I have no idea why that is so thick. Um, it's going to be 40. Yeah, I'm just going to do that actually. Okay, and the angle that I'm going to use with one of the known quantities, so I know 15 is going to have to be that. Okay, so as long as you use these together, that's fine. Okay, so actually I'm not sure why, I'm guessing they've just given us this to confuse us because I didn't need to know that um, just now. Okay, 
So uh, do, 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 I substitute that in. So let's say that x divided by sine of 40 is equal to 15 divided by sine of 104. So the only thing you can get wrong here is by using the wrong angle and length. So the angle has to be opposite the length we're looking at. Now we want to get make x a subject. So how do I make x a subject? I want to get rid of this. Okay, so I'm dividing by sine of 40 on this side. So to get rid of a divide, I'm going to times. Okay, and as I always say, what that really means is I'm saying sine of 40 times x divided by sine of 40 equals 15 times sine of 40 divided by sine of 104. Did not mean to do all that in red. Sorry, there's so many colours for no reason here. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you times both sides by sine of 40. And what happens is the sine of 40 will then cancel on here and it will reappear on this side. Okay? So people just think divide by sine of 40 on this side to move it over times by sine of 40. That's totally fine. That's the mechanics behind it. So I'm just going to rub that out now. Because that now just becomes x. And I'm going to go back to my regular pen. I'm sorry for all the colours, do apologize. So what does x give us then? Calculators out. So we're doing 15 times sine of 40 divided by sine of 104. That's going to give me 9.936. Is going over here. 9.936 and what was our units? In fact, 937. I'll just I'll round it to I'll do three decimal places, sorry. 9.937 and our units were kilometers. Okay. So that's it. I've just double checked. There's not any rounding at the end there. Okay. So in terms of marks, what we're we gonna get? We'll get a mark for working out the angles. Um, so yeah, you get a mark for working out your 40. Okay. You are also going to get a mark for substituting correctly. You'll then get a mark for rearranging and then a mark for your final answer. That's some generous marking, I would, I would say. Um, it's pretty, pretty good. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, four marks for, for that. So again, 50 mark paper, five marks is 10%. You've nearly got 10% of the paper over your, of your marks just for understanding your sign rule with a little bit of bearings thrown in. Okay, and that's almost the same for the cosine rule as well. We had the cosine rule up here somewhere, didn't we? Uh, yeah, it was only three marks for the cosine rule. Okay, but that's pretty pretty decent though, you know, just for substituting into two equations where they actually give you a very, they're, they're not dressing up too, too difficult, um, in such a difficult way, okay? Maybe your angles here might have let you down, but you know what? See, if you don't know what your angle is, just put one in, okay? You do three out of four. If you just said, I have no idea, no idea what's going on here, pal, but I'm going to guess that that is 50 degrees and just crack on three out of four, okay? So, you know, don't don't despair if you're not if you're not sure. Um, hang in there, you know, um, just get yourself started. Get something down on paper, all right? Uh, straight line. Again, always coming up, always got a straight line. They love a straight line. Find the gradient of this line. Okay, now loads of people are going to look at that and say three, okay, and it makes me cry, it's a shame, right? That is not the answer, okay? The number in front of x is the gradient when it is in the form y is equal to mx plus c, okay? So what we want to do is rearrange this equation into that form, okay? So 3x minus 5y minus 10 equals zero. So this is more of a rearranging a question, if you ask me, with a little bit of, of straight line thrown in. So let's get... Uh, get this rearranged to make y the subject. Okay. So whenever we're rearranging, we always start with the numbers furthest away from the thing we're looking at. So five will be the last thing we're going to move over. First, we need to move over the minus ten and three x. If there was a division sign in here, we would do that first. Okay. So I'm just going to do my working line. Uh, this is again a method people like doing. Where they just write down the operation they're going to do. So I want to move over minus ten. So I get rid of a minus on one side. Well, I did. Plus 10. So that's going to give me 3x minus 5y equals 10. Then I want to get rid of plus 3x. 
I did it with something where I'm adding 3x, but I'm going to take 3x away. So minus 5y is equal to 10 minus 3x. And then how do I get rid of minus 5? 1 times in my minus 5, so I need to divide by minus 5. Okay, so it's going to be 10 minus 3x divided by minus 5. Okay, now, I know what you're thinking. This doesn't really look like the equation of a straight line, and you'd be right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it up here. But I'm going to just write it in a slightly, just going to turn around the x term. And the top term is with minus 3x plus 10 divided by minus 5. Now it's starting to look a little bit like an equation of a straight line. Okay, and the minus 5, we can separate that out and say y is equal to minus 3 divided by minus 5x plus 10 divided by minus 5. Okay, so 10 divided by minus 5, let's clarify, that would obviously be minus 2. 10 divided by 5 is 2, so there's a minus. Okay, 3 divided by minus, uh, minus 3 divided by minus 5 is going to give us a positive. So we just scored out those just now. We would obviously do this in a separate line of work, and I'm just being a bit lazy. Right. So that's what we've had to do just to get it into, into the form. There's actually a wee bit of working for two marks here, but it's quite straightforward. I think there's another mark should be on the go, but anyway, for rearranging questions, you would get almost three marks for that almost All right. on its own, never mind then understanding what the gradient is. But anyway, um, so this is it in the form now. Y is equal to mx plus c. The intercept would be minus two. Um, so just, it's not asking for that, but you know. Um, so the, the lines would be doing something like Something like this, okay. It's crossing the y, the y axis at minus two, that's what the intercept is, and the gradient is three over five, okay. So slightly shallower than a y is equal to x graph, okay. So when y, when x is one, y is one, when x is two, y is two, that's your standard y is equal to, to x, right, or y is equal to one x plus zero. If you want to put it into terms of y equals nx plus c, okay, that's my kind of that's my bearings, that's what I like to think of. So a bit shallower than that, and it crosses at minus two. So the answer to this, and again, I'm just talking, talking and talking and talking, is going to be three fifths. Right. Let me just check the marking scheme. Yeah, three fifths. Oh, they let you put it in zero point six if you if you want as well. You could have said zero point six. So you're getting a mark for isolating the y term. So we're just getting y on its own. So I think by the time you got to here, um, you're getting a point, and then you're not getting another mark until the very end. Okay, so. A little bit a little bit harsh but again if you just need to get y on its own that's worth something and again try and remember all these things you know don't don't lose lose faith like you're getting marked all the way through so try and do something okay if you see an equation like this maybe think mm, what should i do do something and in this case i could something maybe rearrange and take up y as a subject okay cool uh, i'll have to stop